well, you've made it a long way. There are lots in this section, and you made it all the way to the very last objective. So congratulations and kudos to you. Uh, in this last section, we're going to discuss how do we use technology to solve trigonometric equations. You may be thinking to yourself, this is going to be really straightforward, and part of it is, but part of it is going to require some conceptual knowledge as well. So let's jump in and see what that means. All right, so if we are solving trigonometric equations by using technology, um, we want to know when are we going to be using that technology. So you would be uh, using this technique when you have a problem that's looking for an approximation um, or you are dealing with trig values that are unfamiliar uh, and if those things are true you're probably thinking a calculator is a good bet. So how do you know if a question is looking for an approximation? Well, it will definitely not say find the exact value of blah blah blah. It might say find the approximate value of or it might say round to the nearest tenth or hundredth or three decimal places. All of those things are phrases or words that are red flags or indicators or clues that we are looking for an approximation and that we will definitely be using a calculator. So how do we go about this process? Well, first we will use a calculator and inverse trig functions and our knowledge of inverses to find the reference angle of the solution. Okay, that's the very first thing we're going to do. Second, we're going to use our knowledge of quadrants and the signs of the trig functions to determine where the appropriate solutions lie, or maybe lies, there may be multiple uh, solutions here. Third, we will use the measure of the reference angle and our knowledge of those appropriate quadrants to find the angle measures of our solutions. And last, we will always use a calculator to verify our solutions work. This is gonna give you peace of mind when you're done with this process that your answers are actually correct. All right, let's jump in with an example. Notice the wording. Find the principal solutions. This is telling me 0 to 2 pi by not including 2 pi to each trigonometric equation. Round to four decimal places. Oh, clue. Round means I want an approximation. Now look at this equation. The sine of x is equal to 0 0.8246. Okay, well, heck. Um, 0 0.8246, do you happen to know an angle off the top of your head that has that as its sign? No, neither do I. And so when you see those unfamiliar values like this, this is also a clue that we will definitely be using uh, technology to find an answer. Okay, now look at what we're looking for. We're looking for an angle measure that has a sign of 0 0.8246. And when we're looking for angle measures, we're always going to utilize trig inverses. And so the very first thing we're going to do is use our trig inverses, okay? And so let's go ahead and think about what we would do to use a trig inverse. If I want x, I'll just take the sine inverse of the left side and the right side, and that will just leave me x on the left. And so we would end up with something that looks like this. x is equal to sine inverse of 0 0.8246. Now we're going to crunch that in our calculator. Now um, remember that we are operating in radian mode. Okay, so x is approximately 0 0.9695. Now, this is our reference angle. It is actually one of our solutions as well, 
but we're going to talk more about that in a sec. So now let's use our knowledge of the quadrants and the signs of our sine function uh, to determine where the appropriate solutions lie. So let's take a look. Here's our cast diagram. Remember that um, I am looking for where is sine positive. And now why am I saying that? I'm saying that because our original equation said sine is this value, which is positive. So I'm thinking, which quadrants is sine positive in? And I know that that's going to be our first quadrant and our second quadrant. Okay, so that's we know that we're working in those two quadrants. So that's all we're doing it with this step. Okay, and then let's think about how would we use our reference angles. Well, let's go ahead and put a couple of angles in our diagram. Okay, so we have got an angle in the first quadrant, and uh, that's going to be this angle. And then I've got a, an angle in the second quadrant. So I'm looking at this angle here, right? From the positive x-axis to the terminal side in quadrant two. So we do know what the measure of this angle in quadrant one is, and that's our reference angle. So I can use it to find the measure of ang the second angle in quadrant two. Okay, so one thing that it's, it's handy to do is since we're dealing in approximations, let's relabel our axis so that it has the labels in approximations. So we know that the positive right side is zero, uh, the left side is 3.14, and then if we come back around, it's 6.28. Now, so this is this is an approximation for pi. This is an approximation for 2 pi. Now if I do the same thing on the positive y-axis, we're going to have 1.57. And if I do the same thing on the bottom, the negative y-axis, I'll have 4.71. This is handy to keep in mind when you are working in approximations, okay? So we know that we're looking for something in that second quadrant, and it should be somewhere between 1.57 and 3.14. And we know, based on what we've done before, that we should be able to find the measure of this angle by just subtracting this reference angle from 3.14. And we know that this reference angle is this value, 0.9695. Okay, so we can probably wrap this question up. We know that our quadrant one angle is the angle that came right out of our calculator because it's between zero and 1.57. And then our quadrant two angle is going to be pi minus that 0 0.9695. And that's going to give us an approximation of 2.1721. So we have a first quadrant angle. We have a second quadrant angle. And we are done with part C. The last part is super simple. You're just going to sub those things back into the original equation and verify that we get the same output. So if we substitute 0 0.9695 in and take the sine of that value, we should get 0 0.8246, and indeed we do. We do the same thing for a sine of 2.1721, and we get the same thing. Excellent, and that is the process of using your technology to, to solve trig equations. All right, let's do another one. Um, we, we want to do enough that you feel confident that you can do these on your own. Okay, example two, cosine of x is equal to negative 4 sevenths. Okay, so negative 4 sevenths is nothing that I am familiar with. So let's go about solving this the same way. Uh, it might be helpful for us to find out what negative 4 sevenths is in a decimal form, and that's approximately negative 0.5714. Remember that the first thing we're going to do is use a trig inverse. So we're going to use cosine inverse here on both sides of the equation. Cosine inverse of cosine of x is equal to cosine inverse of negative 4 sevenths, and what's left on the left-hand side is just x x is equal to 
cosine inverse of negative 4 sevenths. All right, so when you crunch that in your calculator, you should get this value. X is approximately 2.1790. As we're doing this, make sure that when you put this in your calculator, you actually get this value out. Okay, great. Now, is this the reference angle? Mm. Well, this is not the reference angle. It is positive, but it is not acute. And reference angles are always positive, acute, and formed with the x-axis. So this is not my reference angle. Let's take a look at that cast diagram again. Okay, so notice this 2.1790 is over here. Well, that makes sense because cosine is negative on this side. And remember, our inverses for cosine are defined from 0 to pi. So what I'm looking at is this angle over here, right? But that would not be my reference angle, OK? So the reference angle is going to be, if I visualize the angle into that second quadrant, the reference angle is going to be formed with the x-axis and that terminal side. So I could find our reference angle by subtracting this value from pi. So here's our reference angle. x prime is going to be pi minus 2.1790 or 0 0.9626. Okay, great. So let's keep going here. What quadrant are we focusing on here? We are looking for where is cosine negative. And we're looking at that because of our original equation. Cosine of x is equal to negative 4 over 7. So where is cosine negative? OK, well, hopefully you were able to say, oh, on the left-hand side of the axis, or left-hand side of the circle, if you would like to think about it that way. Right, and that's true. We are going to be looking for a solution in the second quadrant and in the third quadrant. We already have our second quadrant solution. All right, so let's go ahead and then think about how do we go about finding our third quadrant solution. Now, I know quadrant two is easy, piece of cake. Got that from my calculator. But quadrant three, I'm looking for the measure of the angle that starts on the positive x-axis, goes all the way around, and ends here. In other words, it's going this far past pi, right? So I'm going to go to pi plus something, right? And that something is my reference angle. My angle measure in quadrant three would be found by taking pi and adding that reference angle. And that's going to give me an approximation of 4.1042. Last thing, double check that you've done your work right. So go ahead and sub those things into your calculators and double check that the cosine of 2.1790 is indeed negative 4 sevenths. In other words, negative 0.5714. And that's true. And the cosine of 4.1042 is also equal to negative 4 sevenths. And that's also true. OK, keep on going. Let's do another example. Tangent of x is equal to negative 5. Now that you kind of have the idea, we're going to move a little bit quicker. We know those four steps in the process. Let's go ahead and use a calculator and get an approximation for uh, x, x is tan inverse of negative 5, which is negative 1.3734. So I'm going to ask you, is this our reference angle? Negative 1.3734. Hopefully you would be able to say no because reference angles are always what? Positive. Positive and acute. Okay, so this one is acute, but it's not positive. Uh, and I know it's acute because it's the value here, 1.37, disregarding this negative, is less than 1.57, which would be a, which would be 90 degrees, right? So this is going to be somewhere down in here in the fourth quadrant. 
but we know that we could find the reference angle by just making this positive, right? It's just going to be the distance. If this is this angle is in that fourth quadrant, the reference angle is formed with the terminal side and that x-axis, and so it would just be the positive form of that angle. So your reference angle is going to be positive 1.3734. Okay, awesome. Let's think about what we're looking for. We are looking for where is the tangent negative, all right? Tangent is positive in quadrants one and three, which means it's going to be negative in quadrants two and four. Okay, so our calculator gave us this thing, negative 1.3734, which is technically a solution here, but we want the principal solutions, which means we want to go from zero to two pi. We want to express our answers in positive uh, angle forms that are in that window of zero to two pi. All right, so let's go ahead and put some uh, angles in here. Let's think about what's going on in quadrant two first, okay? We want the angle measure from that positive x-axis all the way to this terminal side in quadrant two, which is not quite all the way to pi. So we need to take pi and go backwards by this reference angle. So to find that quadrant two angle, we'll take pi and subtract this 1.3734. And we would get an angle measure of 1.7682. For quadrant four, think about what we're looking for. We're going for the, from the positive x-axis all the way around to this angle in quadrant four, but not quite all the way to two pi. Okay, but not quite all the way to two pi. So we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna take two pi and subtract 1.3734, and that's going to give us that uh, angle measure of 4.9098. Check those answers, make sure they work, and they do, we're good to go.